Hey guys, Will here. So it's been a number of months now since we originally looked at the Invicta and Forte wheelbases from Asetek Simsports. We also looked at the La Prima bundle just a couple of days ago here as well. Now I would encourage you to check out those full review videos where we went into a massive amount of detail if you haven't already. But spoiler alert, we were absolutely blown away by the quality of the force feedback in all three cases. But there was one major limitation, I guess you could say, and that was the fact that you had to use their wheels. And given that there's only two of those available, at least at the time of filming this, that was was a pretty big consideration if you're looking at getting into an ecosystem for the very first time. Now, I'm very happy to say that they've just released their brand new Invicta quick release adapter kit. And not only does that do away with that limitation entirely, it, in my opinion at least, makes this the most open ecosystem that we've seen to date in sim racing. So let's dive in now. I'll show you how this quick release works and how it opens up this ecosystem to work with pretty much any sim racing wheel on the market. Let's get started. All right, so I'm gonna make this as quick and to the point as I possibly can for you guys today, starting with a quick bit of information for you that is always very important. Uh, big thank you to Asetek Sim Sports for sending across the gear for us to check out in today's video. Now, if you do decide you wanna pick up any of the gear that you see in today's video, then there are some affiliate links down in the description below. That's just a way that you guys can help support our work here at Booster Media if you find what we do of value to you. So we really appreciate your support there. Now, we're gonna be referencing the ecosystem as a whole quite uh, significantly in today's videos. So it would also be sensible to check out some of our reviews that we've done of other ecosystems too. Mozza Racing, for example, Fanatec, Simucube. We've covered pretty much everything here at Boosted Media. So make sure you do your research there and uh, make sure that you're getting yourself into the ecosystem that is going to suit you the best. But as is always the case here at Boosted Media, there's absolutely no sort of third party involvement here whatsoever. Nobody has any control over what we say and uh, they won't get to see the video before you guys do. So let's get into that video right now, starting with pricing information information. So there's a couple of different options available here with this quick release adapter kit, depending on what you're going to need. So if you're just after the one, if you only own one sim racing wheel, you're looking at 126.04 euro or 149.99 US dollars. Now, if you know that you're going to be using your rig with more than one wheel and you don't want to have to unbolt the quick release and bolt it onto a different wheel every single time you want to change between wheels, they do also have the option of a five pack, which does save you a significant amount. That comes in at 504.17 euro or 590. 99 US dollars and none of those prices include any taxes or shipping so just make sure you do your own research there uh, you can also buy these through resellers as well so make sure you check out the reseller network we also do have a couple of links down in the description box below for some of our affiliate resellers one of which may be close to you so make sure you check those guys out as well so it certainly isn't an insignificant amount of money as a percentage of what you'd be spending on a new sim racing wheel so it's certainly worth considering now there are a couple of other options available on the market a couple of them that come to mind that I have experience with are the the uh, HRS or SimLab Zero Play quick release, which I've been using on my SimiCube 2 Ultimate for a number of years now. We actually have a full review that we did probably three years ago here on the channel, which I'll link down in the description below for you. Now, as is the case with any third party quick release, you've got to buy the wheel base side, which is something that you only need to purchase once. And then you need to buy a wheel side for every single wheel that you want to use it on. So for that particular adapter, you're looking at 69 US dollars just for the wheel side, which is quite a bit cheaper than what you're paying for the Acetec mount. But the important thing to note there is that it doesn't include any electronics. So if you're using a USB wheel, you are still gonna have to run that cable back to some sort of a USB port, either on your rig or back to your PC. And that's really where the big advantage of this ecosystem lies. Now there's also the option of the VRS quick release, which we looked at just a couple of weeks ago here on the channel. Uh, that comes in at 99 US dollars for just the wheel side, but neither of these include any electronics. Now there is also the Q Controls QRX quick release, which comes in at 155 euro for the wheel side. Now that does give you a USB connection from the wheel base side connection through to the wheel side. So it does mean that you're not having to connect your wheel directly to the PC via that USB cable. But because it is a third party quick release, you are still gonna have to have the front of your motor connected to a USB port, which means you are still gonna have a cable that will spin around with the motor. As you can imagine, as this side of the assembly spins around, if you've got a USB cable connected to it, that's still gonna be connected to your PC or your rig somewhere in the line, which means it's still gonna coil up and uh, be a little bit more clumsy on the rig than something that's fully integrated like what we have here. So what exactly are you getting for the money? So you get the wheel side quick release adapter itself, which we'll look at in just a moment in more detail. You get a pre-installed 80 millimeter shaft. You then also have included a 150 millimeter shaft and a 200 millimeter shaft. So if you're wanting to get that wheel closer to you, you have both options included inside the package. Now, 
I kind of thought it might be nice for them to not include those or include maybe the option of which one you want when you purchase the kit to keep that price down. And when I thought about it, I kind of figured, well, the cost of machining one of these versus having multiple options available in the shop with different packaging and everything probably means that it's actually around about the same kind of price for them to just include them in the box. So I'm guessing that is probably the justification for doing it that way. But either way, I think when you consider what you're getting here and the electronics and everything that's included and the quality of what you're getting too with everything being completely CNC machined and uh, anodized, the price point does make sense, but that's certainly not to say that there aren't cheaper alternatives available on the market if you don't mind having that USB cable connected back to your PC. But back on the topic of what you get in the box here, there's also this CNC machined anodized uh, 70 millimeter stud pattern adapter. So what that's gonna do is bolt to the back of the shaft and then screw through to your wheel as you'll see a little bit later on. So that is included obviously in the packet too. They do include a nice long uh, Allen key tool here as well. Uh, there is one little uh, nitpick that I have about this which we'll share with you a little bit later on too. And then they do also include some mounting hardware as well which includes screws for mounting this guy to this and then some bolts for mounting the steering wheel through to the adapter here. So everything you need to get up and running is all included in the box. There's no nasty surprises or last minute trips to the hardware store, which is always a good thing. So I said in the introduction, this makes the Acertech ecosystem the most open on the market now, in my opinion. So what exactly do I mean by that? So. Basically, what we have here is a completely wireless quick release mechanism in terms of getting data and power through to the wheel. Now, you might be thinking there are plenty of other wireless systems on the market. Mozza has a wireless system, Simicube has a wireless system, Simagic do, Fanatec do. There is one major consideration there with all of those other ecosystems, and that is that they're using their own proprietary protocols for actually transporting that data and power through to the steering wheel. So what I mean by that is that in all of those examples, those protocols that they're using only work within their own ecosystem. So let's use Fanatec as an example here first, because their ecosystem is actually locked down more than anybody else's, at least at this point in time. And uh, then we'll look at some of the other scenarios as well. So in the case of Fanatec, if you don't have a Fanatec hub or a Fanatec wheel connected to your wheelbase, then force feedback is disabled entirely. Now there are a couple of third party emulator options available, which uh, do bring the price down a little bit, but you're gonna have to buy one of those for every single wheel that you wanna use on your Fanatec base to essentially essentially trick the base into thinking that there's a Fanatec wheel connected and enabling force feedback. So it's very locked down in that sense. And you will still, in the case of any wheel that's connected via USB, still have to run that USB cable back to your rig or to your PC. So you're not gonna be able to utilize that wireless functionality available on the, uh, on the Fanatec ecosystem if you were using one of their native wheels. Now there are a couple of ways around that. We recently reviewed the uh, Leux wheel, which actually connects to your uh, PC via Bluetooth directly. So it takes power from the Fanatec quick release, but then it uses a Bluetooth connection through to your PC to actually get the data through to the wheel. And it does work quite well. I was actually really impressed with this wheel and you can check out the full review linked down in the description below for you guys. But it is a bit of a roundabout way of achieving the goal. It is much cleaner to just have a, I guess, a basic USB connection going directly through the wheelbase. Now in the case of all the other examples that I can think of at least, if you look at VRS with their DirectForce Pro, that actually don't have any sort of pro protocol at all for getting data and power through to the wheel. So it's completely up to you to figure out how you're gonna do that. Usually it's done by just connecting the wheel through to your PC or your rig directly via USB. Mozza and Simagic both deliver power through to the wheel from the wheelbase directly, but then use their own proprietary protocols for connecting the wheel through to the base, either via Bluetooth or via the pins on the front of the wheel. Then in the case of Simicube, they don't have any way of delivering power directly to the wheel via the motor. So you have to have a battery inside the wheel. Uh, some use replaceable batteries or rechargeable batteries, and that's never really been a major issue. Uh, I've actually been using that, that system on my daily driver rig for about four years now, and never really had a problem with it. But the limitation there is that they are using a proprietary Bluetooth protocol to connect directly to their wheelbase. So it means if you buy SimuCube wireless wheels, you're only ever gonna be able to use those wirelessly at least with a SimuCube wheelbase. So that's a really important, uh, I guess, factor in the decision-making process because you're really heavily investing in one particular ecosystem in those cases. So in every single one of those scenarios, you're dealing with a proprietary protocol of some sort, which limits what types of wheels you're able to connect uh, if you don't wanna have wires running directly back to your rig or to your PC. And that is what makes this new Acertec quick release very unique. So you've probably already noticed the little USB pigtail here, which is poking out of the wheel. If I grab the other one that I have on my rig here and pull it off quickly for you to show you, 
So what we have here is a Gomez Sim Industries uh, Formula Pro Elite, which we reviewed on the channel just a couple of months ago. And you can see on the back here, I've got the Acetec Sim Sports Quick Release. I've got the USB cable going from the wheel directly connected through to the little pigtail on the hub. And what that means if I move this guy out of the way is that we can drop this directly onto our wheelbase and this will run as if it's connected directly to the PC. So the really important thing to understand here is that the connection which is being provided here on the base side is actually just a standard USB connection. It's not using any sort of proprietary protocol whatsoever. So being just a standard USB connection, you can already see where this is going. You can literally connect pretty much any USB accessory as long as it's drawing a standard amount of power. I'm not sure exactly what the power delivery uh, specification is here, but I can tell you that this particular wheel, the reason we used the Gomez wheel is because I actually had a lot of problems when we reviewed this wheel originally on the channel. Uh, we had to use a powered hub. We couldn't use certain extension cables, for example, because it was causing issues with the screen glitching out, but we had absolutely no problem whatsoever connecting this in. We literally just bolted it on plugged it in and everything just worked straight out of the box. So that is the scenario with the quick release adapter. But before we move on into some of the more specific things, I also think it's worth mentioning that they are also establishing a network of third party wheel manufacturer partners as well. And I'll list them on the screen for you right now. So what that means in a practical sense is that rather than having a USB connection, which you then have to wrap around the stem and plug into a USB port, you're gonna end up with something a little bit more like what we have on the native Acetec Sim Sports wheels. So you'll have a quick release here. The USB connection will be integrated into the actual hub. So that way you literally just drop the wheel onto the wheelbase and you've got the data and power right there available without the need for any wires whatsoever. So it's really great to see them expanding the ecosystem. I was a little bit worried earlier on that we might see them sort of lock things down to their own wheels, knowing that they are planning on releasing an array of different wheels into their ecosystem. So I'm really happy to see that they're opening it up and uh, not only giving the option to connect pretty much any USB accessory that you want, as we see here, but also opening it up to third party manufacturers to partner with them and have their own Acetec versions of their wheels. So let's just move these little bits and pieces out of the way for a moment here. And I wanna talk a little bit more about the quick release itself and how this works. Cause we did have a couple of concerns back when we reviewed the Forte and Invicta bases, just on things like longevity and you know the potential for play and uh, you know wear and tear, things like that. Now we've got quite a number of hours under our belt now with these products. We've been testing them out extensively uh, on Tom behind the camera's daily driver rig, as well as uh, a couple of our test rigs here in the studio too. And we've had absolutely no issues beyond the few little nitpicking early adopter issues that we had when we first reviewed those products, which you can go back and see the details on in those reviews. But what they've done, one thing that we did have an issue with was the original springs that they used in the quick release were a little bit too loose, which meant that if you pulled on the wheel hard enough, uh, you could actually pull the entire thing off the base, which obviously isn't ideal if you're in a race. And we did actually have one instance where Tom was actually driving in one of our community races and the wheel actually came off the base in his hands. Now, what I was really happy to see was the response from Acetec Sim Sports to that situation. Uh, we let them know that that had happened. We also uh, didn't hide it in our review. We let you guys know about it as well. And they actually put a stop on shipping out all of their products, not only to their own customers, but also to resellers, fixed the issue and came back with a revised design uh, about a month and a half later, which has dealt with the issue. We've been testing it out extensively. And uh, even with a long shaft like what we have on this guy here, absolutely no issues with being able to tear the wheel off the rig. Now there is obviously a load rating there. If you were to pull hard enough, it would come off to protect the motor, but under normal driving conditions, it's been absolutely no issue whatsoever. So what they have is just a nice stiff spring here in this little latch. And all you need to do is just pull the latch, drop it on, to the quick release like so, and it is now absolutely rock solid. There's no play in there whatsoever. You can see in the footage here, there's actually a little bit of movement in the uh, in the Acetec front mount before you see any flex in the mechanism whatsoever. So absolutely rock solid. I did have my concerns about potential wear and tear. Uh, if, if the little lip on the latch here got worn down over time, it might create the opportunity for a little bit of flex. But again, in the almost six months now that we've been using this, we've had absolutely no issues whatsoever to speak of, no play developing whatsoever. And they actually say in their literature, and you can see in uh, Andre, the CEO's video as well, they actually had some real life race drivers and sim racers test these guys through uh, 10,000 cycles, I think it was he said. And uh, yeah, absolutely no issues with play whatsoever, which has also been our experience. So yeah, it seems to be absolutely rock solid so far. And look, it's a really clever design as well. You can see these little floating pins 
down here. One of the big complaints that we've seen with the Fnatic ecosystem over the years is things like snapped pins. I actually experienced that myself many years ago now on a Club Sport wheelbase 2.5 base. In those designs, the male pins actually insert into the female connector, which means that any play in the wheel whatsoever is going to put stress over time and fatigue those pins to the point where they ultimately will snap off. Whereas with this design, what they've done is utilize pogo pins or floating pins, which you can see here are actually spring loaded. And then there's just a little contact pad on the wheelbase side. So literally all that does is just sit down on top of those pins and create the connection, which means it should be nice and reliable. There's no risk here of uh, going on an angle and bending these pins either, because you can see by the time it actually interfaces with the pin assembly, it's kind of forced to go straight down because of the design of the front piece here. And then if you are wanting to run some sort of a wheel which doesn't require any connection whatsoever, all you need to do is just undo these two screws, the PCB slides out, and you can actually remove the entire assembly. You can see the little grommet just slots out and the whole thing just slides out of the back. So all in all, very, very simple. Just a couple of tiny little nitpicks that I did have with the mechanism. First of all, the very first thing I noticed was just how sharp this notch where the grommet for the USB cable passes through. And uh, I saw it visually and then literally the very first time I went to work on it, you can see I actually did manage to slice my finger and I was actually being quite careful, it's just that sharp. So it's obviously just a byproduct of the CNC machining which they do do in house. And I know uh, Andre actually said in a video that they purchased a brand new CNC machine just for running these guys off as quickly as they possibly could. So it's great to see them investing in their own hardware to produce these things rather than outsourcing it means that they ultimately have the control over the uh, quality control and everything like that. And you can see just here, looking at the details here, just the quality in the CNC machining. There's no little metal burrs or anything like that. I believe that there are elements here which are cast. I think that this little flat piece is actually one of those because you can see a couple of what I think are casting marks in there. But either way, the quality, at least to my eyes, seems very, very high. If you're an engineer, feel free to correct me if you see any problems. But overall, impressed with the quality, as I would expect to be for the price point. Now, the other small nitpick that I had, and it is a very small nitpick, is that uh, just during the installation process, we did find that the Allen key that they provided, while it is long enough to install the 150 millimeter shaft, if you're installing the 200 millimeter shaft, you are going to have problems with it not being quite long enough to rotate. And uh, in the case of the flap here as well, what I did find is that because you're needing to go in on an angle to actually fasten this, uh, you did have a problem. I actually did have, end up having to use a different Allen key just to mount this on. Now, most people have a set of Allen keys, so it's certainly not a deal breaker or anything like that. But if they'd used a rounded end like what we have on this Allen key here, that would mean that you could get the tool in on a bit of an angle and tighten it in and you wouldn't have a problem. So, you know, if you're including the tools to do the job, the tools that are included should be fit for the purpose. And yeah, that was just one small nitpick with the Allen key. But otherwise, yeah, absolutely no issues to speak of whatsoever. So in terms of other things that I think you guys need to be aware of, uh, look, really the, the major thing just to be aware of here is that the quality of the experience overall is going to be dependent on the wheel that you're using. What they're basically doing is they're providing a USB connection to the point where you're connecting the wheel. Anything that happens beyond that is going to be purely down to the software and uh, firmware, all the software requirements that are required for the particular wheel that you're using. Now, again, we did test it with a number of different wheels. We didn't run into any weird issues uh, beyond what we've experienced with those wheels, connecting them directly to a PC. And as I said, the, the specific reason I chose to test with the Gomez wheel specifically is because we did run into quite a few little uh, teething issues when we originally reviewed this wheel. Things like the screen glitching out or the LEDs not working. And uh, it was very, very sensitive in needing to have a certain amount of power delivery and uh, not uh, any interference in the USB connection, things like that for it to work properly. So yeah, it, it is gonna be dependent on the wheel that you're using. Uh, some wheels are gonna need to have say SIM hub running, for example, or their own software packages. So while it is as simple as far as the ecosystem is concerned as just taking the wheel that you're not using using off, putting the wheel that you want to use on, there's no guarantee that it's always going to be an absolutely seamless experience. So say again, for example, using the Gomez wheel, uh, we found that if we took this wheel off during a, uh, during a session while we actually had the SIM running and then put it back on again, uh, we would actually have to exit out of the SIM and then go back in again for the wheel to be detected properly and for the screen and LEDs to function correctly. That might not be the case for everybody, but uh, with the particular version of SIM Hub that I was running, and it is the latest version, uh, we did have a couple of little glitches like that. And it's exactly the same if you were to unplug it from a USB port on your rig and then plug it back in as well. But I just wanted to make that clear that uh, you know in the case of their own branded wheels, you can literally 
literally just take one wheel off and put another one on and everything just works. Similar with Fnatic as well, if you're looking at that ecosystem, whereas when you're relying on third-party wheels with their own third-party software, the experience can't always be guaranteed in that sense. So I thought it was just worth mentioning. But yeah, just to reiterate one last time, any wheel that you can connect directly to your PC via USB will work with this. Any wheel that requires a proprietary protocol will not work with this. So hopefully that clarifies everything for you guys. I don't think there's anything else that you need to be aware of here. Overall, a very impressive product. I, uh, I would love for it to be a little bit cheaper, but I can see why it costs as much as it does. I do like the option of buying a bundle with five of them to reduce the price a little bit. I know that a lot of people will be wanting to use this with multiple wheels. A lot of people do have growing collections. And the more I mull it over in my mind, the more I think that the kinds of people that are you know, able to afford five or six wheels in their collection probably aren't gonna to be too fussed by the price point here, given the flexibility that it's giving you. So in closing, I guess my comment would be that when you, when you combine the quality of the force feedback that we've seen with uh, everything from the La Prima through the Forte and the Invicta wheelbases from Asetek Simsports, I, I really do think when you, when you combine that with this open ecosystem, it does make this a very, very, very compelling option. And as I said in my La Prima review video just a couple of days ago, if it was my own money, that would probably be the bundle that I would be looking at at the moment. And having this now as well, we didn't actually have our hands on this yet uh, when I made those comments on La Prima. That just would push me even more in this direction, I think. The fact that I can use any USB wheel with this, have no cables swinging around and twisting up, yeah. It makes it very, very, very compelling. But if you are looking at other options, of course, we do have reviews for all those on our website as well. So check out boostedmedia.net for all those reviews. But that is it for today, guys. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you again very soon. Bye.